We Brits are a nation of obsessive collectors. Across the country, there are storage units straining at the seams, wow. <laughs> groaning garages, and stuffed garden sheds. Wow, oh I've God. forgotten how much stuff I've had. Home to dreams. My director's chair. Past lives. That's unbelievable. And untold baggage. And we're drowning in it. Heaven's sake, what are all these things? But among the clutter and the junk... Empty box! Ooh. My mission is to find buried treasure. 1,500 to 2,500 pounds there. Wow. Gosh. Unlock memories. There's a lot of memories in two boxes. And turn trash into cash. 260, 270, 280. Welcome to the world of storage hoarders. I'm here to help hoarders at the end of their tether with TAT. Yes, once again we're on the hunt for cash among the clutter. Our first hoarder in need is Clay Paulson with his good mate Debs. Although Clay's storage unit was supposed to be a short-term solution, two and a half years down the line he's still using it and has managed to rack up a four and a half thousand pound bill. So, how has that happened? I always tend to keep things and think they will definitely come in, in use later on. Um, and I always find that whenever you throw something out, the very next week, you need it. Clay lives in Newport, the third largest city in Wales and the birthplace of Hollywood actor Michael Sheen. And it was at a local acting group 15 years ago that Clay and Debs first became friends, but she's only recently discovered his dark secret. By chance, I found out about his storage... Uh... Uh, his lock-up thing. He was taking something down there, so I went down with him and uh, he opened the door up and there was just all this junk, basically, in there. Over the years, I've accumulated other people's furniture and other people's belongings, and so I found that my house was getting to the point of, you know, saturation, where his rooms, would, the doors wouldn't open. But Clay hasn't just been cramming his storage unit full of useless stuff. Over the years, he's had a diverse range of jobs, too. I actually com competed in bodybuilding, uh, powerlifting, and I think from that point that I then got asked to do uh, exotic dancing, shall we say, for hen nights, of which I started off as a favour and ended up doing maybe three or four on the weekend. Because I was a, a bodybuilder at the time, and uh, the name of the gym was Olympus Gym, so I billed myself as the man from Olympus. Oh, I see. Well, sadly, a back injury put paid to Clay's exotic dancing. Now he's strapped for cash with only a mountain of clutter to his name. Why do you keep it, though? I don't know. The trouble is, Clay's not sure what he's storing anymore. Name me ten things that are in there. Ten things. Teapot. There's a teapot there. Teapot. There's a load of albums. Yeah. Vinyl. Debs is constantly saying, why are you paying out X amount of money for other people's junk? And... You know, I said, one man's junk is another man's treasure. And Clay's hoping that treasure will help to pay for some much-needed home improvements. It'll be lovely when it's finished. It will. It will, it will. It'll be lovely. It's going to add value to the property anyway, and that's yes. you know, the main thing. I've spent maybe the last two years trying to put a driveway into my house. I really need to get it done because the back garden's open, really. I need to put the railings on and get a builder in to finish the other side of the wall, so... If I made some money, at least I could put it towards paying a builder. I think he has good intentions at the minute, but I think when we, once we get there and he, he actually starts looking at what's in the lockup, he'll start re remembering why he wanted to keep it in the first place. So I think there'll be a little bit of kind of bittersweet. He'll need to be pushed a bit. We can take him to the edge of the cliff and I'll push him off. <laughs> well, I'm glad to see I have an ally in Debs, but do we have the collective muscle to force Clay to end his hoarding ways for good? So are you up for this, Clay? Ooh, I don't know. Um, I think so. I, no, I think so, Aggie, I think so. Do you know what's in there? There's quite a lot of stuff that I'm not quite sure. If you don't know what's in there, you won't... We can check it. You won't miss it, will you? Yeah. yeah. No time like the present. Let's do it. Ooh, I'm Ready? looking forward to this. Oh! What does this mean, all this stuff? Where does it come from? I used to rent out properties a few years ago, and I guess when people, should we say, left quickly, mm -hmm. they tended to leave stuff. You're now paying to store it, <laughs> so it's like double debt, isn't it? Yeah, really, really. Yeah. Uh, but you never know. This yes. chair, this has to be the first massage chair ever made. Have you used it? 
No. You're just paying to hang on to it. <sighs> well, it's um, it's got a sense? certain amount of charm, isn't it? For look at, I mean, no. Surely it's, it's got to be worth something. I mean, the, look at it. It's the boxes are nicer than the chair. <laughs> Are the beasties in here? <laughs> so, why have you got this in storage then? It's a proper yeah, sheepskin. Right. I know it's seen better days, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know. When it was on the sheep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, give me a break, girls. We've only just started. I know. And I soon start to build a picture of this former exotic dancer. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> oh, God. Did, you, did you just dig that out or something? That was me. Uh, about it's 20 years ago. Actually, you. Actually, me. OK, if you guys just carry on, I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Clay and Debs need to empty the unit and start sorting, so I'm going to leave them to do a bit of powerlifting of their own. Our next storage hoarders are sisters Christine and Joe. Over the past two and a half years, they've spent over a thousand pounds on storage bills. So what's going on? Dad died in 2009, um, and when we had to sell his house um, the following year, um, it was full of all things that he'd collected over the years. Christine and Joe live in Leeds in West Yorkshire, a vibrant city steeped in history that has more listed buildings than anywhere outside London. And the city's huge array of galleries and antique shops meant it was easy for Dad to keep adding to his hoard. He used to go around antique shops and flea markets and he collected things, paintings and collectibles, ceramics. I think my dad would have loved to have been an art dealer if he could have done, but uh, obviously he didn't know enough about things. So um, he was just more of a hobby, really, but he did enjoy enjoyed what he did. Will you help me make a lemon drizzle cake? I will, yes. In fact, he enjoyed his collection of art and ephemera so much that Christine and Joe had to rent a unit to store it all, but not before they'd made one final promise. Before my dad died, um, he used to say to me a lot, when I, if anything happens to me, promise that you will have the pictures looked at and you won't just get somebody to come in and just clear the lot. And I said, no, I won't. He said, because one or two of the pictures I have paid quite a bit of money for, and I'd rather you get them valued. Originally, with the storage unit, we felt that it was just like a temporary measure to put the things into there until we had a chance to look through them. And it's, been, it's obviously gone on a lot longer than what we anticipated. With their storage bills mounting, the sisters feel ready to move on, but keeping their promise to Dad could prove emotional. To see some of the items for the last time before we part with them whilst they were, you know, we'd seen them in, hanging up in Dad's house. In a way, I'll be slightly sad um, because we're parting with something that my dad liked. But on the other hand, it'll bring back some happy memories as well of what he used to tell us about those paintings. Have we to um, look up some yeah, prices for I'd like to see to how much it'll England. be, just out of interest. And Christine and Joe have another good reason to finally stop the storage and save some money. A once-in-a-lifetime trip down under. I do have plans um, for the money that we may, may or may not make, and, uh, but at least the rent on the storage unit would be something. I think it's time to find out if the sisters can rid themselves of their inherited hoard once and for all. I've sent our antiques expert Tom Keane along to Leeds to help Christine and Joe work through their father's forgotten items. I'm hoping he'll find some hidden treasures. Ah, hello. Hello. Hello, who's this? Christine. Hello, Christine. Hello. Tom. Hi, Tom. Hi, I'm Joe. Pleased to meet you, Tom. You too, Joe. How are you? Fine, thank you. Are you? Yeah, well, not bad, not bad. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous, but excited about what I'm going to see inside this storage lock up. And, um, come on, let's get it open. OK, thanks. Ladies first. Thank you. Oh, dear, I didn't realise how much we had in here. This isn't as bad as what I thought it might be, but this more really looks like uh, antique dealer's heaven. Oh, does it? It does, yeah. <laughs> so your dad liked a painting, then? He did. He seemed to like to collect paintings. He's got ceramics as well, I think. Has he? Boxes. Mm -hmm. right, so you've got... Only about 150, 200 paintings here in pictures. To and, uh, still look through. Well, ladies, I think the best thing you can do is 
Give ourselves some room to work. We'll get this area here in front of us clear because we've yes. got a lot of paintings around the wall. Yeah. Yes. Once we can get in here, if we can get in, we can get out. Yeah. Yes. At the moment, in. we can't get in, can we? No. Well, I'll, what I'll try and do is pull out the more important ones or the things that catch my eye. That's right, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, we'll find the uh, diamond and bunch of rocks. Coming up, I'm left struggling to make sense of Claire's chaotic collection. How am I going to get out of here? That's the question. <laughs> Can you help me? The sisters unearth some pictures from the past, but will precious memories turn into priceless items? 160, 170. We've been helping to dust off and declutter the long-forgotten debris clogging up people's units in the hope of clawing back some serious cash. Earlier, we met former exotic dancer and bodybuilder Clay, who opened a unit so he could declutter his house, but seems to have amassed even more stuff. I can imagine it in the fireplace. Mm. I know it's seen better days. When it was on the sheep. Yeah. <laughs> and sisters Christine and Joe, who spent more than a thousand pounds storing their late father's huge collection of art and memorabilia. That looks like junk. Someone's junk is another person's treasure. To help our hoarders clear their units, I want them to split their possessions into categories. Keep it for those really sentimental pieces, skip it for anything old, broken or just plain awful, or sell it for the items they think could be of value. I've also added a charity pile onto which they could put anything that's too good to chuck. Later, I'll be asking our antiques experts to help our hoarders pick out anything of value they can take to auction. But now it's time for our storage hoarders to get tough with their stuff. They've got just three hours to sort through their possessions. And just so our hoarders can see exactly what they're dealing with, I've arranged for some help moving their items to a larger space. Clay wants money to build a new driveway, but so far his unit has revealed nothing but a jumble of junk from his and other people's houses. Christine and Joe, meanwhile, seem to have unlocked a treasure trove of art and collectibles belonging to their late dad. They want to raise some money for a trip to New Zealand, but with nothing catalogued, it's anyone's guess what they'll find. It's time to get sorting. Ooh! Oh, God. That's better. It's like Look a brilliant buy. Look how much more I could get into here. <laughs> Is yours by any chance? That would be mine, I guess. This is broken. What was that, charity? Uh, charity, maybe. Skip. Skip. <laughs> And you kept this why? Um, it's art. Look, I mean, <laughs> how the light falls on the creases and things. Mm. Okay. Yeah, okay. Skip. I'm glad to see Debs is getting tough and leaving Clay no options. Charity. Charity. Yes. It's going to be some busy charity shops. So far, so good. But I'm wondering if there's anything Clay wants to keep. There's. The tapestry there, which used to hang at my grandmother's, uh -huh. and my mother had it for some time. I think it might, might be worth a look to see what it is. I remember it's it. A, it's not just a piece of carpet that's been framed, is it? <laughs> I know, it looks <laughs> like, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you thinking about? I just remember it being a bit more special than that when I was younger. I think he's saying he's not that keen on it, aren't you, Kate Clay? I think maybe Perry should have a look at okay. it, just in case. Well, I'm glad to see Clay's not putting up too much of a struggle yet. And he's even found something that could chime with the bidders on auction day. Oh. oh. Now, do you know about this? I do, actually, yeah. This is one of the things I thought might be in here. Um, my great-uncle, I think, bought it in the war. International Watch Company. I've always thought it might be worth money. So would you be willing to sell this if it was worth money? Oh, uh... I don't know. After, I mean, this, yeah, you can't actually call this clat, can you, really? Think this of is... the di driveway. Think of the driveway. <sighs> Shores. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, yeah, I guess if... Um, I'd need to have it valued, I yeah, guess, and of course. Yeah, maybe That's reserve what... or something, but... That's what we'll find out. While Clay cracks on, I've sent our expert Tom Keane along to Leeds to help Christine and Joe sort through their father's forgotten hoard. Look at this pile of pictures. I could see why Aggie didn't come. <laughs> yeah, don't blame her, actually. <laughs> but even he's taken aback at the sheer number of items. It's going to be a long day. Yeah, yeah it is. It's, it's very really long. long. Like it. Luckily, our dynamic duo wastes no time getting stuck in. You see, I quite like that one. I think that's nice. 
there's a lot more than what I was thinking when it's all outside the unit. Mm. To help get a clearer picture of what's here, Tom wants the girls to arrange the art into themed categories. I'll put that up here. Still life, what have you got in your hand there? No, these are not good. Oh, no, they're landscapes, boring landscapes. Boring. Well, let's do a boring landscape pile then. OK, yeah. yeah. As the sorting continues, Tom discovers a rogue print made up to look like an original painting, but nothing fools our expert. What we're trying to do is sectionalise these yeah. things. This is an oilograph. All oh, right. And what they do, they get the picture and they put a clear varnish, a print, oh, over right. it. So the brush marks don't actually m match the... Uh, the painting, so right. you can see where the brush marks are going across, yeah, like a one inch brush put across a, uh, a print. Yeah, so you've got a five pound print now trying to look like a hundred thousand pound painting. Right, it's a clever illusion, yeah, but that's always an illusion. Yeah, it's an illusion. There's a photograph album here. Well, I wonder what photographs are in that. And it's not long before the sisters come across some precious family mementos. Oh. Oh, there's some of my mum and oh, dad. That, that must be the honeymoon. It's 1952, and I know they went to Bridlington. Yes. Oh. There's my mum sat on the chair. <laughs> my dad. Oh, look. Oh, look at my dad with Judy. Oh, dog. The, these were taken um, at the house. I wouldn't mind, actually, if we get rid of this album to keep that, put it in my bag. My oh, I want bag. to keep the album. I don't Do want you? to get... Yeah. As well as being a keen art collector, it seems that Christine and Joe's dad also had a fondness for ceramics, and Tom spotted some likely lots. I pulled this out for a reason. Do you recognise it at all, why your father might have collected these? I do recognise that, and um, he, did, he did get some of them at a charity shop. Did he? Yeah. Well, do you know what? It might be, and it might be a blessing in disguise, the factories. Crown Ducal. Right. Now they were producing wares in the 1920s and 1930s, and a bit earlier than that as well. Very stylish Art Deco wares and jug and bowl sets and what have you, and they were <laughs> quite famous then. Quite strange for me to say, let's go to a specialist, mm. somebody that deals with this sort of thing, and see what they've got to say about it, because these are the antiques of tomorrow, the collectibles now, and uh, I'm hoping they might be worth 10 or 20 pounds each. Now if they are, that's right, either 50 or 300 pounds. Mm -hmm. Let's find out together and be educated together. Mm -hmm. Pottery and porcelain is one of the most popular collecting areas, but the sheer number of makes can be baffling for a beginner. So Tom sent the sisters to meet pottery specialist Sue Cashman. Fingers crossed she'll get fired up by their collection and even make them an offer. Crown Ducal is the trade name of a company that was called A.G. Richardson. Um, and they were actually in production from about 1915 till roughly about 1974. Um, and they were mainly known for making tableware, so um, dinner services, tea sets, and also what they call fancy goods, which is where the vases yeah. would come into. What you've brought today, and just having a look at these, I believe that these were actually made in the 1950s, and they were probably made for a promotion for Rington's tea. They are all in good condition, and I'd sort of say they fit into what we call the retros look at the minute, because they are very 1950s. They're not a high-value item because such a lot of them were produced, as you can imagine, for a promotion. So currently, you're probably looking at them actually selling for anywhere between three and five pounds per vase. Well, not quite the windfall we were hoping for, but it's always worth looking at for other names like Royal Dalton, Wedgwood and Royal Worcester, particularly if they've been produced in limited runs. There's also a growing market for retro ceramics from the valuable Art Deco of Clarice Cliff to the more mass-produced pieces of the 50s, 60s and 70s. But even these are unlikely to fetch the £53 million someone paid for an 18th century Chinese vase at auction in 2010. So, how about the sisters' collection? Any of these something that you might be interested in buying? Um, I think I, I probably wouldn't be at the moment, mainly because we do more, as, as you can see by what we've got in the shop, sort of the more traditional and say it's not as much retro things. So, I would, but maybe auction would be the place to go because it's a larger collection. As I say, there are certainly specialist shops out there mm. who be, may be more interested, or actually younger people who are collecting what we call kitchen retro things that right. you know would probably be okay. the, the best way to advise. Yeah. Right. If we're lucky and there's two people who like the retro sort of vases, we might get two people bidding together. But personally, myself, <laughs> I haven't got very high hopes for them. <laughs> 
but I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> well, I hope you're wrong too, Jo. Back in South Wales, Clay seems desperate to keep as much tat as possible, but there's one thing I just can't take lying down. Dare I sit down in this? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear me. I've got to... How am I going to get out of here? That's the question. <laughs> Can you help me? <laughs> oh. I can't... Is it... On any level, it's not worth anything, it's not beautiful, it hasn't got sentimental value. What can I say about it? It's... It's got a certain amount of charm, the fact is, I've never, ever seen a, a <laughs> massage chair this old. Clay, can I just point out that this thing is actually broken? And for someone like you, to sit in it and try and get out of it is going to probably do you further damage. I'm going to regret this, Aggie. Get ye behind me, devil. <laughs> it's gone, OK? <laughs> In Leeds, the sisters are still sorting through their late father's hoard of pictures, and Tom spotted an intriguing piece with a local connection. We've got this self-portrait by the artist Jay Cudworth, that's Jack Cudworth. We've got a lot of Jack Cudworth's work. Have you? I've seen one or two here. Where, why have you got a lot of his uh, works? Um, my dad met him, and then um, they became sort of friends in later life. Quite a few, have you? Yes, yeah, so there's a few boxes that have got quite a lot of the Jack Cudworth ones in. What I think we should do is get them all together. Mm. We'll find a local dealer specialist, because he's a local artist yeah. now, and uh, local artist work will always make money in the area it comes from rather than down south, okay. if you like. So uh, we'll get some of those together for self-portrait and see if we can put a parcel together for a dealer okay. and uh, see if we can get a good offer. Empty box! Oh. Our hoarders have almost finished sorting. There's just time for one final push. Goodness gracious me. Value-wise, they're not too valuable. Charity, maybe? Tumble dryer. Skip. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a sharp reminder for Clay, which has brought back memories of his more active days. So tell me what you've got here in your hands. OK. This is a, a CB Gorman professional diving knife. Mm. Um, basically, the design stayed the same, I think, from way back when they had the brass helmets and the lead boots. Oh, and the, right. yes. the breathing pipe all the way up. Um, this one is, I guess, is from the 70s. But the strange thing is, uh, the, mo the most unusual thing is, it's never been in the water. It's never actually, the blade itself isn't particularly sharp. So it's as new. How come you have this? When I, st I was a di diver myself. And um, I, obviously, I met a lot of divers in, the, in my time. And this, this old chap used to come to the shop where we all used to hang around and talk about diving stories. And yeah. Things. He came in the shop one day and he said, you know, I've got this. Mm. And he said, I wondered if you'd like it. You know, I know you're a very enthusiastic diver. And I was like, I saw it and I was blown away. And How do you feel about parting with it or do you want to keep um, it? We don't know how much it's worth, do no, we? No, no, no. I guess it depends on the valuation because mm -hmm. as much as I love it, I think, you know, it's part of the history of diving. I need my driveway finished. Yes. Well, fingers crossed that knife scores well for Clay at auction. Our hoarders have finally managed to sort their items into keep, skip and sell piles. Christine and Joe are keeping next to nothing but just look at their huge pile to sell. Clay, meanwhile, is finding it hard to let anything go. Coming up, could that vintage watch strike lucky for Clay? Sensibly, two to three hundred, but it could go more. Thank you. And at auction, will his prized diving knife keep his dreams of a driveway afloat? <laughs> to help two hoarders take control of their clutter, we've been lifting the weight off a bodybuilder's shoulders. Let's put it in the cell, pal. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. absolutely. And try to paint a clearer picture for two sisters. There's a lot more than what I was thinking when it's all outside the mm. In deciding whether to keep their hoard, skip it, or sell it. So, does former strongman Clay have anything of value in his hoard? Immersed in antiques since his youth, expert Perry Field knows how to sort the treasures from the tat. So, Perry, we've pulled out a few items that we thought might be worth looking at, and we're wondering what you make of them. OK, well, let's have a look and see what we've got. I'm going to pick up these Ray-Bans. Now, these are great. These are very men in black, aren't they? Yes. Very. But they are real Ray-Bans. Um, they're not as old as I'd like them to be, because old ones do fetch good money. Probably 50, 60 pounds. Wow. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, so here we've got something 
also very interesting. And this is a diving knife. And you know who it's made by, don't you? Yes, I do. It's made by C.B. Gorman. That's correct. Yeah. C.B. Gorman was a German. He was actually a watchmaker. Came to England and he opened a factory in 1819 and he actually specialised in diving equipment. And I would estimate a value of two to three hundred pounds. Wow. Ooh. So that's pretty good. Pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's also pretty sharp yes. as well. Yeah. Yes. Lastly, and almost leastly, um, is the tapestry. It's, I think it dates from about the 1950s or 60s. It's machine made. It's very soft, actually, if you touch it. It's got a very nice sort of velvet it's sheen like to rug, it. It's a rug, isn't it? It is like, it's almost like a rug. Um, it would look great in a pub, in a country cottage, that kind of thing. I do think there's an auction value to it, but I think it will appeal to somebody and it's actually quite a nice scene. Oh, he's been very kind about <laughs> it. Much kinder <laughs> than I was. So now that Perry's plumbed the depths of Clay's hoard, among the items going to auction are that diving knife valued at two to three hundred pounds, the frame tapestry valued at twenty to thirty pounds, and those Ray-Ban glasses valued at fifty to sixty pounds. But there's one item that's really caught Perry's eye. This is wonderful. This really is an absolutely beautiful piece. Uh, it's a silver pocket watch, and it's the international watch company IWC. Mm -hmm. Very well known, made today. Um, but actually started way back in 1868. The company was founded by a chap called Florentine Aristo Jones. So he might have been a Welshman originally. <laughs> yeah. um, and if we look at the back here, we can see that it has the hallmarks for Swiss silver. So it's a continental silver piece. Yeah. It's not 925, which is English sterling standard. It's 800, but it's very accepted as solid silver. Keen to find out more, Perry takes Clay to meet expert David Hughes-Lewis. He's been in the watch trade for 30 years and, who knows, Clay might even wind up with an offer. Very nice. That's a good start, isn't it? International mm. Watch Company, affectionately known today as IWC. And they make very, very expensive watches today. Mm. 10, 15, 20,000 pound watches. Can we have a look at the workings? Because I know that's all important, isn't it? Yes, of course we can, Perry. Easily opened. There we are. Absolutely crisp and clean inside. And there's the engine room. Absolutely beautiful. It has had some repairs done to it, but it only looks as if it's had one in its 100-year life. Pocket watches were first made in Germany in the early 1500s but became really fashionable across the world when they were mass produced in the 19th century. The most expensive pocket watch ever sold was a 1933 gold Patek Philippe. Called the Super Complication, only one of its kind was ever built and it sold for over £7 million. Pounds. So David, the all important question, which is, what's it worth? What's it worth, Perry? It is a specialised timepiece, and I think it's the sort of piece that should go to auction, really. Um, I think it would fly away at four to six hundred, because mm. it is top quality. It really is nice. OK, so you've heard the valuation, yes. but I think we should find out whether David might like to buy it and if he's prepared to make an offer. I, I would offer three hundred for it, but I do think you'd do better at auction with this. I really do. If you do go to auction and it fails to make a good reserve, my offer's still there. So you can always come back to me. I appreciate your offer That's and we'll pleasure. get back to you. Pleasure. Good luck Thank with you. this. I Thank hope you. you do really well. I was pleasantly surprised at the, the value of the watch, four to six hundred. Uh, maybe even more if there's two collectors in the room and the, they drive the bidding up. So uh, really happy. Bring it on. Well, he's got a guaranteed offer, so let's now see what those bidders make of the watch and Clay's other items as we head to the auction house. So, here we are at auction, and you've had an interesting time at the specialist, haven't you? Quite interesting, yes. When it was actually taken to the specialist, mm -hmm. he was over the moon with it. He said, this is so rare. So you have a reserve on it, do you, for how much? I re reserve for 375. Do you have reserves on the other items? I've put a... I think it's quite a liberal reserve of 150 on the knife, which was valued at two to three hundred. Uh -huh. um, the Ray-Bans I dropped to 50 pounds because I'm not going to wear them. And yeah. 
So there are reserves on all these items. Are you worried that you'd be taking anything back to home today? He says that he's happy for them to go, but, you know, just by placing a reserve, you know, is he really? <laughs> Mm, I think Debs might have a point about those reserves. But I wonder what auctioneer Matthew Caddick makes of Clay's items. Clay Paulson is four lots and it goes from the obscure to the sublime. We've got uh, a 1970s diver's knife, which is good and quirky. Haven't seen one before. It's one of those items which if someone falls for it and knows exactly what it is, it should sell. The two risk lots, one is the Aviators, they're Ray-Bans, they're a good name, we all know them. I've seen them sell before, um, but it all comes down to people's tastes. The picture, at 20 to 30 pounds, whilst it's a weakness, we should do well with the other three lots, I'm sure. Uh, and at the other end of the spectrum, we've got a very well-known entity, which is the IWC Pocket Watch. 200 pound estimate doesn't seem expensive for such a name and such an item, but let's see what happens. We usually get the buyers for this kind of thing. Well, let's see if Matthew's right, because the tapestry is the first to go under the hammer with an estimate of 20 to 30 pounds. I bid 18 pounds. It's a cheeky bid just below a really low estimate. I'll take 20 in the room to annoy them. At 18 pounds here, me take 20 now. At 18 pounds, don't let them have it for 18 pounds, for God's sake. 20, thank you. And two, two, I'll take now. 20 pounds, take two. At 20 pounds, thankfully in the room, selling 20. Oh, well, it's good for low risk. Yes, it's good. It's a good start, eh? Well, we're off to a flying start as the tapestry makes its lower estimate of £20. Next up with an estimate of two to £300 is the diving knife. £150 Well below estimate, 150 start me. Start me £100, then we'll see where it goes. Unusual thing, start me £100, we'll judge where it goes from there, £100 start me. No bids of £100, shall I pass the lot then? No bids of £100. Not sold. That's what you suspected, isn't it? Well, with no bidders surfacing, the knife fails to sell. At 50 to 60 pounds, I hope the bidders take a shine to Clay's Ray-Ban sunglasses. I bid 45 pounds and I bid 48 pounds. I'll take 50 in the room. At 48 pounds for these Ray-Bans, take 50 now. At 48 pounds, below estimate, and I can't sell them unless I see 50 now at 48 pounds, we'll be done. <sighs> God. What a disappointment. It seems the dark clouds have really gathered today as sadly those glasses have failed to meet the reserve. Now the specialists thought Clay's pocket watch could fetch more than £300 at auction. Clay's put a reserve price of £375 on it, but will it be the right time for the bidders? I've got a bit of £300, I'll take £310 in the room. At £300 of me, take £310 now. And away to go at £300, take £310. At £300 only, then it's not quite enough and not sold at £300. Not sold. Not sold. Oh dear, the watch winds down just short of the 375 reserve. What a pity. One item sold out of four. Are you regretting putting the reserves on the others? <sighs> Not really, no. No. Honestly, truthfully? Uh, the Ray-Bans came, they came really close, didn't they? I mm. thought you might have used his discretion on the Ray-Bans, but... Um... And the watch? Well, I did say that I would quite have liked to sold it to the, the gentleman in Cardiff, um, mm -hmm. which is why I put the reserve on it uh, yeah. over that, um, and I probably will go back. And Debs, the one item that did sell, what I know. about that? The most minging <laughs> item on, <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> There's no there rhyme or reason, no. is there? You can never tell what's going to happen at an auction. Well, with most of the items failing to meet the reserve, Minus commission, Clay has made just over £18 at the auction. But he did take up the specialist offer of £300 for the watch, making his final total £318. That's definitely a step in the right direction. So, Clay, going back to the storage unit, what's happening there? Well, um, most of the stuff has gone to charity. Um, quite a lot went well, out. you didn't send that chair to charity. I... Sent the chair to Chair Heaven, I think. That's where it's uh, ending or up. Chair Hell. Chair Hell, maybe. <laughs> Effectively, I don't have a, a storage unit. By the end of this week, it'll really? be clear and I'll have total up my bill and gone. That's yeah. great. That's a real result, isn't mm. it? I'm so glad Clay's finally dumped the storage because that yeah. saved him another £1,800 a year. I think he's discovered less really is more and his dream of a new driveway is that much closer to coming true. Still to come, Christine and Joe get some surprise news about their prize paintings. Right then, we've got a problem. But will they draw some serious bidding at auction? And bid 150. 160, 170.
earlier, after tackling his hoard head on, the best of Strongman Clay's clutter made just £18 at auction. Not quite enough to build the driveway he wanted, but he has cleared his storage unit for good. Now it's time to see how Christine and Joe have done. They're wading through the plethora of paintings their father collected over the years before he passed away. With over 20 years in the antique street, let's hope expert Tom Keane can paint a pretty picture for the sisters. Well, Christine and Joe, I'm starting to feel knackered. I'm sure we've got loads to go through. <laughs> Luckily, their cell pile is huge, and it looks like Tom's already on the money with some vintage banknotes. Do you remember those? Oh, yes. No. My grandmother used to send me these in the post for my Aww. birthday. But there you are. So I think you're going to get another 30, 35 quid each for um, these. Not bad at all, but what about their late dad's art collection? You've got two 19th century paintings, a watercolour here, a bit damaged around the edge, mm. and this uh, oil-on panel. Mm. And I think the auctioneer should take that as one lot and put them together and estimate them for the two, 50 or 60 pounds. Should get that. We'll also do this watercolour. Well, this is late 19th century, yes, but again, it's, it must be another 30 or 40 pounds worth. Well, it's an impressive haul so far, but what about those original paintings by local artist Jack Cudworth? These aren't all Jack Cudworths, are they? They are all Jack Cudworths, yes. yes. You asked us to find them and we have done. And they're all here. <laughs> right then, we've got a problem. Oh dear. It's a nice problem. If we take those all to a specialist, or auto auction at the same time, you're going to flood the market and shoot yourself in the foot. So, I think what we need to do is take two, two quite nice ones, or even the best ones, to a specialist. We'll find out what sort of money they want to offer. We'll take another two as well to auction, just two. Because if my estimate earlier was correct at 60 or 80 pounds each, 100 pounds each, perhaps even 150 for better ones, you've got over 50 here. Gosh. <laughs> It looks like the girls could be sat on some serious money. Christine and Joe's late father fancied himself as a bit of an art aficionado. Let's hope his creative instincts were right, as some of the items Tom has suggested go to auction are a set of framed banknotes valued at 30 to 40 pounds, a 19th century watercolour and oil on panel at 50 to 60 pounds for the pair. Tom also suggests taking three 20th century paintings of Venice valued at one to 200 pounds. And those 15 crown ducal vases that were valued at 100 to 150 pounds. Tom has chosen just two works by Jack Cudworth to take to auction. A framed display of six smaller pictures by the artist and a Yorkshire industrial scene with pylons estimated at two to 300 pounds for the pair. Tom wants his sisters to meet local gallery owner Stephen Harrison Lord to see if he can shed any more light on the work of Jack Cudworth and whether he might even make the girls an offer. I believe he was uh, born in the Leeds area. This, this bottom painting is painted in Kirkstall Abbey in Leeds, which is where Jack Cudworth was born, and uh, uh, obviously showed a lot of early talent because uh, this is a very competent painting and he's only 15 at this point. So it just shows um, what, what a talented chap he was because he's doing this as a young man mm -hmm. uh, before he went off to college in Leeds to study art. On this one, uh, later in life, and actually this one I would think is very much inspired by um, Monet. Uh, he painted a, a series of pictures uh, on the Thames in London when he came over to see his friend Pizarro and he's done this, this, this rising sun is very similar to a very famous Monet painting. So I think it was clearly inspired by that. Roughly how many have you got of these? About 109. 109. <laughs> Jack Cudworth actually, although he was born in Leeds, went to work in Ireland for many years and he became a member of the RHA, the Royal Hibernian Academy. So that's the equivalent of the Royal Academy in Ireland and exhibited over there and I believe he's also exhibited in the Royal Academy over here and the Scottish Academy. So he's gone all around the country clearly a very highly respected artist. Christine and Joe's dad certainly championed Jack Cudworth, but it's always difficult to know which artists are going to rock it in value. If you're interested in collecting art, you should keep an eye out for those who have a consistent, recognisable style, or are starting to get a name in the art world and had work exhibited in one of the London galleries. Who knows, you might even discover the next David Hockney, one of the most influential artists of the 20th century, and a Yorkshire lad too. Well, Hockney was born just up the road five miles away and he's Britain's um, most favourite artist. Some of his work goes up for seven million pounds. So 
If only you had a hundred of those, yes. you'd be a bit well in, wouldn't you? Wouldn't yeah, if only half of us got chatting up hotly, it'd have been all right. We'd, we'd have been out tonight, wouldn't we? We, we would, definitely. Would. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so um, there, but there are quite a number of uh, local artists that have gone up, up in value an awful lot. We have in, in Brighouse, which, where I am, uh, Peter Brook is a very well-respected uh, artist. He's in the Tate Gallery in London. And we used to sell his works 10 years ago and for three, four hundred pounds. Now we're selling the same work for five thousand pounds. So mm -hmm. it's worth looking around galleries and, and catching a rising market on, mm -hmm. on a good artist. Well, Stephen, that leads me to the question, are you interested in buying these? Well, it's a good question, but I'm afraid not. However, it's only because I'm not, this not quite my style of work. It's a bit too traditional for my, uh, my shop. But um, I've done a little bit of research, and uh, Jack Cudworths are regularly sold through auction. And um, uh, lesser paintings might go for one or two hundred pounds, uh, but the highest value I've seen is two thousand pounds. And it consistently hits the five hundred to a thousand pound market. So I think you said you've got 145 of these, was it? 109. 109 of those. <laughs> yes. So if we mark that up by, uh, you know, between 100 and 2,000 pounds, there could be quite a, quite a little stash of uh, value there. We've had some good advice today, so maybe rethink and have a good look through the pictures and then decide what goes and what doesn't. Well, it sounds like those paintings could really put Christian and Joe in the frame for their trip to New Zealand. But now it's time to head back to the auction to see how the rest of the sisters' lots do when they go under the hammer. So how hopeful are you about today? It's the first time we've ever been to an auction, so I'm not sure, you know, how it will go. Mm -hmm. It all depends on the people that are bidding at the auction, if anybody does bid for them. I'm not right sure about how it will go, though. No. <laughs> do you have reserves on anything? Yes, we do. We have reserves on the, the money uh -huh. and... Um, the vases. The vases, yes. And the Jack Cudworths. And the Jack Cudworths. Well, it might be a new experience for the sisters, but let's hope they leave the auction with a healthy profit too. So, what does auctioneer William Rouse make of their lots? Christine has got some 20th century pictures, and at the moment, 20th century art is what seems to be catching the imagination of people, more than, in some cases, some of the older art. Jack Cudworth is a 20th century artist, and there, are, there is a bit of potential here. There's an estimate of two to 300, and I'm quite optimistic that uh, that will attract a certain amount of interest. That sounds very promising, but let's see what happens when the hammer falls. First up are two Victorian oils on boards, estimated at 50 to 80 pounds. 170D is the Victorian oil on board, 170D, and I've got two identical bids here mm -hmm. of 80 pounds, with me at 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, still with me at 100 pounds, 110 in the, in the room against commission at 110, in the room. Against commission then, 110, anybody else, 110. That's a great start and £30 over the top estimate. Next, it's a set of 19th century paintings, estimated at 50 to £60. 22, 25, 28, 30, 32, 35, £35 there, do you want 38? 40, 42, 45, 48, 50, 55, Shaking his head, £55 in front of me. The paintings do well, selling in the middle of their estimate for £55. But there are choppy waters ahead because the 19th century Dutch fishing vessels, the set of Venice Orlon boards, the frame banknotes, and the collection of Crown Ducal vases all fail to meet the reserves. It's not looking great. But what about those two Jack Cudworth paintings Tom selected from the hoard? With an estimate of two to three hundred pounds for the pair, we're all really hoping these will impress the London bidders. And bid 150, 160, 170, 170, 170 pounds, 170, with me, 170. Oh, ladies, that's a bit of a mixed bag. 61, oh, what a shame. Well, there was no London love in the room for the Jack Cudworth paintings after all. Not sold. So what are you going to do with the unsold items? We'll probably get somebody to come and have a look at them and then maybe put them in an auction at Leeds, where we live. I suppose with the Jack Cudworths, with him being born in Leeds, they may sell better mm. in Yorkshire. Yes. Yes. 
Well, today at auction, minus commission, the sisters have made over £150 from the sale of two items. So, what will Christine and Joe put the money towards? I wanted to go with Jo to New Zealand because I've got relatives over there. Obviously, we'll have to sell a lot more things to, to, to get there, get there eventually. Well, but you will, I'm sure you yeah, will. Yeah, I'd like to go again because mm. it's such a beautiful country. Mm. Definitely. And how have you found the whole storage orders experience? been enjoyable. Has it been helpful? And very helpful, I yes. think, yeah. Yes, because they've put us in the right direction. It's been an emotional journey for the sisters sorting through their late dad's precious collections. But when they find the right buyers for those Jack Cudworth paintings, they may well find themselves on their way to New Zealand. Join me, Aggie McKenzie, next time on Storage Hoarders. <laughs>